Weeping, oozing, crusting of lesions. If the child is an adolescent or you have an early adult, then you're going to have common areas of eczema, which would be antecubital or popliteal. If the child is what? Is an adolescent. Okay. If they're an adolescent phase or early adult, they're going to be antecube and popliteal areas that are going to be affected with the eczema. What do you want to teach? What do you want to teach the patient who has eczema? What do you want to teach them to avoid? Scratching. Scratching. What else? Think about things that they do every day, activities that they live. What do they do every day to where you have to tell them, hey, avoid this? While you're doing this, I need you to avoid that. While you're... Okay, so we're talking about bathing, right? So avoid excessive bathing. Oh, excessive. Mm-hmm. Yep. Avoid excessive bathing and washing of affected areas. You need to make sure that the water is tepid. Okay. And you need to make sure it's a short time frame. Okay. So no staying in the bathtub for such and such time. Why? Because it dries off the skin. It's gonna make it worse. You need to avoid exposure to skin irritants, soaps, fabric softeners, diaper wipes, powder, it's worse. Uh, what type of drugs will we give these people? Topical. Topical. Okay, so hydrocortisone, right? Yep, corticosteroids. Um, antihistamines is an inflammatory response, right? Okay. Um, you also want to prevent and minimize scratching to avoid getting what type of secondary infection? What type of secondary skin infection? Impetigo. Impetigo. Mm-hmm. I-M-P-E-T-I-G-O. Impetigo. Yep. So you want to avoid that. And then you want to instruct the parents to monitor for lesions and signs of infection. So like honey colored crusts with the surrounding erythema and things like that. Yeah, that's when it's getting worse. It's impetigo signs. <clears throat> Since we're talking about impetigo, let's go on. Impetigo is a contagious bacterial infection. It can cause by be caused by straph, straph, staph or strep. Okay, staph or strep is most commonly occurring during the hot, humid months. Okay, the impetigo. That yeah, both of them yeah yeah. <clears throat> Impetigo can also be caused by um, poor hygiene, okay? So people who don't clean themselves good, you know, um, they can end up getting that as a primary infection. Or it can be caused by a secondary infection. Like we said, if we scratch the eczema and it skins breaks and everything and you end up getting an infection because of the dirt under your nails, things like that, cause an infection. Also, um, an insect bite, dermatitis, um, poison oak, poison ivy, stuff like that will cause impetigo. Um, so what do you want to give these people? That will get impetigo. It's a bacterial infection, so they're going to get a what? Antibiotic. Antibiotic. Right. Antibiotic. Um, what type of isolation? Contact. Contact, yep. Contact, isol contact isolation, yep. Um, you also want to... Um, you can administer antibiotic ointments. Um, you may have to administer oral antibiotics if there's no response to the topical antibiotics, right? Okay. Um, we go least invasive to most invasive anyway. Now, here's a thought. Uh, the infectious agent, if it's a strep type, it can cause damage to the nephrons. Okay. If the strep type, because you know it can be caused by strep or staph. So if it's strep type in Patago, it could be caused, it could cause damage to the nephrons. So a secondary infection of strep impetigo would be what?
Glen Mary Lawn on Fridays. Okay. Mm-hmm. Glen Mary Lawn on Fridays. Yep. You want to keep the area moisturized. Provide the emollients so they can prevent inching, right? You don't want them to itch. <clears throat> you need to tell the parents they need to use separate dishcloths, separate hand towels, things like that. They need to wash in hot water, okay? Wash the linen in hot water. Pediculosis capitis, what's the other name for it? Head lice. Oh, lice. Head lice. Oh, okay. Yeah, head lice. Capitis, head lice. Yeah. yeah. Most common sites of involvement of head lice is what? Where? In the head. Where? Yep, ear. Yep. So right by the ear, behind the ears, nape of the neck, occipital area. Um, what happens is they have the female that will lay the eggs on the hair shaft close to the scalp. And the lice can survive there for 48 hours away from the host. Head lice is transferable through what? Yeah. Combs. Yeah. That's why a lot of children get it. Because it's like, oh, wear a hat. You know, that type of thing. So direct contact, indirect contact. Um, all of the children um, that are infested, all of the contacts of the children that are infested, rather, um, they should be examined. So one child has head lice, let's check the whole family. Okay. What do we use? for head lice. The comb, the knit comb, right? We have to remove the knits. Okay. We also have to wash the hair using a special shampoo. Right. Right. Um, tell the child not to share clothing. That's a good thing. Scabies. Scabies is a parasitic disorder. Okay, parasitic disorder. And it is caused by what? Scabies. Mm-hmm. Um, a... It's a parasite. So the female would burrow the hole in and lay her eggs. Yep. So you, that's what you'll see. You'll see like burrow holes on the skin. And then you'll see a fine gray line. That's like, you know, yeah. Kind of difficult to see, but you will be able to see it. After the egg, after the female lays her eggs, she dies. Um, they're infectious throughout the entire period. Uh, there's different medications that we can use. Permethrin is one of them, and it is applied to cool skin, cool, dry skin, at least 30 minutes after bathing. Okay. There's another one. It's called Lindane. Lindane can only be used for children over the age of two <clears throat> because it has neurotoxicity defects and seizures so we don't want to use it okay question the nurse is monitoring a child with brute with burns during treatment for burn shock which assessment provides the most accurate guide to determine the adequacy of fluid resuscitation. Skin turgor, level of edema at burn site, adequacy of capillary filling, amount of fluid tolerated in 24 hours. Most accurate guide? Most accurate guide. We're determining um, fluid resuscitation. Is it is it healthy? Adequacy of capillary filling. Okay, so the capillary refill that kind of so determines. So if you have good capillary refill, then mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. If not, then it's not working. Right. The mother of a three-year-old child arrives to the clinic and tells the nurse that she had been scratching the skin continuously and has developed a rash. The nurse assesses the child and suspects the presence of scabies. The nurse bases this suspicion on which finding noted in the assessment of the skin of the child's skin. Fine grayish red lines, purple colored lesions, thick honey colored crusts, or clusters of fluid filled vessels. Okay. Fine grayish red lines. 
permethrin is prescribed for a child diagnosed with scabies, the nurse should give an instruction to parents regarding the use of this treatment. What should that instruction be? Apply the lotion to the areas of the rash only. Apply the lotion and leave it on for six hours. Avoid putting clothes over the child with lotion. Apply the lotion to cool dry skin at least 30 minutes after bathing. D. The nurse working at a school has provided instructions on teaching about impetigo to parents of children attending the school. Which statement made by the parent indicates a need for further instruction? It is extremely contagious. It is most common in humid weather. Lesions most often are located on the arms and chest. It might show up in an area of broken skin, such as an insect bite. Need for further understanding. What was the last one? It might show up in an area of broken skin, such as an insect bite. Mm -hmm. It is extremely contagious. It is common in humid weather. Lesions are often located on the arms and chest. It might show up in an area of broken skin, such as an insect bite. Is it D? It's C. C. Yep. Because lesions are mostly are on the face. Oh. Yep. <clears throat> the clinic nurse is reviewing the health care provider's prescription for a child who has been diagnosed with scabies. Lindane has been prescribed for the child. The nurse questions the prescription of which is noted in the child's record. A, the child is 18 months old. B, the child is being bottle fed. C, a child, a sibling with, is using Lindane for the treatment of scabies. D, the child has a history of frequent respiratory infections. The school nurse is performing pediculosis capitis head lice assessments. Which assessment finding indicates that the child has a positive head check? Macular papular lesions behind the ears. Lesions in the scalp that extend to the hairline or neck. White flaky particles throughout the entire scalp region or white sacs attached to the hair shafts in the occipital area. What is this lice? Yes. White sacs attached to the hair shafts in the occipital area. C. Steve. C. It's D. 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 Oh, it mm -hmm. It's D. Yep. White flaky particles throughout the entire scalp is dandruff. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. The lice dance. It's awesome. Hematological disorders. What do you know about sickle cell? <clears throat> It is. It is a blood disease. It is. What type of disease, though? Is it autosomal? Is it autoimmune? Is it? Is it? It's genetic. It's genetic. It's genetic related, right? Because we have to have both parents having the sickle cell trait, right? Okay. So if mom and dad has the trait, one out of four one out of four children will have the disease. So it's an inheritance, a present. You have different risk factors. One of them including that both parents have the heterozygous for hemoglobin S, which is the trait, or being African American. So, with the hemoglobin S, the, that protein is sensitive to the changes of oxygen content in the red blood cell. So, insufficient oxygen will cause the cells to assume the sickle shape, okay? And the cells will become rigid and clumped together, all right? So, that's agglutination. So, they'll clump together and they'll obstruct capillary blood flow. You have different situations that can precipitate sickling, including fever, dehydration, and emotional or physical stress. Any condition that would increase the need of oxygen 
is what oxygen demand is what going is what's going to alter it and cause them to have a sickle cell crisis, which is an acute exacerbation. Um, there's different types of crises. They have vaso-occlusive, splenic squestrian, hyperhemolytic, and aplastic. And we can talk about a couple of those here. Vaso-occlusive crisis, what will that include? What does that characterize? If you look in the name, vaso-occlusive. Mm -hmm. Vaso-occlusive. V-A-S-O, occlusive. Okay, now just, this is all blood, right? Yep, vessels. Okay, so this is vessels, occluding of the vessels, right? All right, and so what's happening here? What happens when you occlude a vessel? What happens? Um, not necessarily, not necessarily, but you have a stasis of blood flow. So blood is not flowing, all right? You've got clumping cells. Um, you're going to be experiencing possible ischemia, infarction, because we have lack of blood flow to the areas, right? So you can get uh, fever, pain. Pain is really big. Um, abdominal pain, things like that. Joint pain, feet pain, whatever. Um, so those are your type. That's the type of crisis. Splenic squestrian it has splenic in it, so we know that this is something dealing with the spleen, right? So you're going to get pooling. There's going to be a pooling of um and clumping of blood in the spleen okay that's what then you have hyperhemolytic break that word down hyperhemolytic you have an increased rate of destruction right yep an increased rate of destruction hyperhemolytic okay and then we have aplastic aplastic that's caused by what <clears throat> By a viral infection. Bio? Viral. Oh, viral. Yeah, viral infection. Yep, yeah, caused by a viral infection. Um, manifestations would be profound anemia or pallor. That would be pale skin. Yeah. Okay, so those are the different types of crisis. Now, what is our, what are we, um, what is our main focus with a sickle cell crisis? Two things we want to focus on, pain and what else? What is our focus for intervention? What do we want to do? We want to provide pain management and we want to provide what? For them to be calm and relaxed. Fluids. Okay. Fluids. Yeah. What do you want to give first? What do you want to give first? As far as medication? Yeah. Which one, which one would you give first? Pain or fluids? Um, fluids. Fluids. Right? Fluids. Without adequate hydration, pain medicine won't flow. So we need to have circulation, right? So we establish circulation and then we can give pain medication. Okay. Iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Low iron. Low iron. Right? Mm hmm How does it, how do it come about? Like, what, it results from what? Blood loss. Blood loss. Okay, blood loss, yep. Increased metabolic demands. So, pregnancy. Women that get pregnant end up having iron deficiency anemia because we've now increased our metabolic demands by having another life, right? So that life takes from us, we need more. Syndromes of GI malabsorption, okay? Certain malabsorption, um, we can have that and we would need more, we increase our demands. Um, dietary inadequacy, lack of eating iron foods, right? Assessment, what we see? Think of the anemic patient. Anemic patients are so cold. Cold. Why? Their, their anemia is 
intubation of hemoglobin, right? Low hemoglobin levels. Low hemoglobin, low, ha low hematocrit. What else? <clears throat> Weakness, fatigue, paler. Sometimes they're short of breath. Things like that. Okay. What will be your intervention for the iron deficiency anemia patient? Encourage iron rich foods, right? Sometimes supplements are needed. If it's bad enough, I am injections of iron using the Z track method so we won't leak the iron out into the tissues, right? Okay. Um, what else? If they're taking liquid iron, use a straw. Use a straw. Yep. Give it with what? What do we give iron with? Vitamin C. Why? Um, for the absorption. For the absorption. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, what about aplastic anemia? Aplastic anemia. Okay, so it's a deficiency of circulating erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, right? And other formed elements resulting in the arrested development of cells within the bone marrow. It can be primary at birth or it can be secondary. It can be acquired. Okay, different um, causes would be uh, viruses, infection, and we talked about aplastic crisis, so viruses, infection, autoimmune disorders, allergic states, things like that. Um, it's only defined di the definitive diagnosis by bone marrow aspiration. And so in the bone marrow aspiration, they're going to be looking for that conversion from red bone marrow to fatty bone marrow. Okay. All right. Therapeutic management. How do we manage this? What type of therapy? Immunosuppressant. These people take immunosuppressive drugs and bone marrow transplant. Okay, so just think about it. Not able to produce red bone marrow, they're gonna need a bone marrow transplant. Yep. Um, you're gonna see pancytopenia, which is deficiency in the erythrocytes, the leukocytes, and thrombocytes. Everything, pan, all around. Okay, pants that opinion. Um, interventions. Administer immunosuppressive medications. And what else? Blood transfusions, if necessary. Corticosteroids. Mm -hmm. You know, steroids and immunosuppressants, they kind of have a relationship. Yeah, they have a relationship. This bleeding disorder is resulting from the mom passing it to the son and it is a autosomal recessive trait x-linked and what is this called hemophilia a or what's the other name for it classic hemophilia you that's factor what that's factor, X. That's factor eight Hemophilia A is factor eight. Hemophilia B is factor nine, and that's Christmas disease. Yep. Yeah, factor eight and factor nine. So that's how they're able to, to treat them. If they're deficient in factor eight, then you're gonna give them factor eight. So that's hemophilia A. Hemophilia A is factor eight. Factor eight. Hemophilia B is factor nine. Your primary treatment is going to be to replace the missing factor. Bleeding precautions is the interventions, right? Drug of choice is also DDAVP. Mm -hmm. It's a synthetic form of vasopressin.
there is another lastly um, blood disorder beta thalassemia major thalassemia is an autosomal recessive disorder and it is characterized by the reduced production of one of the globin chains in the synthesis of hemoglobin so that's not it's not, um, no, no, this is thalassemia. It's different. Um, the incidence is highest in the Mediterranean population. So your Greeks, Italians have this. Both parents must be carriers to produce a child with thalassemia. Both parents must be carriers. Okay. The nurse analyzes the lab results of a child with hemophilia. The nurse understands that the child will most likely have this in the abnormal platelet count. I'm sorry, most likely have be having this as an abnormal lab level. Platelet count, hematocrit level, hemoglobin, or PTP with hemophilia. Sit in. PTT. Okay. The nurse is providing home care instructions to the parents of a 10 year old child with hemophilia. Which sport activity should the nurse suggest for this child? Soccer, basketball, swimming, field hockey. Swimming. The nurse is studying a presenting clinical conference the, and discusses these causes of thalassemia. The nurse informs the group that a child at greatest risk for developing this disorder is which of these? A child of Mexican descent, a child of Mediterranean descent, a child who takes iron, a child who's breastfed. B. A child with beta thalassemia is receiving long-term blood transfusion therapy for the treatment of this disorder. Chelation therapy is prescribed as a result of too much iron from the transfusions. The medication that the nurse should anticipate to be prescribed would be what? Fragment, miraponium, metoprolol, or deferoxamine? Miraponium? D. Deferoxamine. Yeah. The clinic nurse instructs the parents with the sickle cell anemia child. right yeah if you look at it d-e-f-e -E, um which is identified by the parents as a precipitating factor that indicates a need for further instruction for the child with the sickle cell and can possibly have a crisis so what would they say that would be wrong stress trauma infection or fluid overload stress trauma, infection, or fluid overload. Fluid overload. Fluid overload. Yep. That was good.